All right, hello. Thank you for waiting for me all day. Um, so I'm Quan. Um, I work at uh, Urban Footprint. And the point of this presentation is to talk about um, how we compute walk and transit accessibility in Urban Footprint. Um, and I don't actually just want to talk about how we do it at Urban Footprint, but I want to give everybody here a set of open source tools and frameworks that are really quick and handy, so you can do this on your own um, if you'd like to, um, or you can use Urban Footprint for the enhanced features. Um, so before I start, uh, what is accessibility? Accessibility is the measure of the capacity of a location to be reached by or to reach different locations. So it's not coverage per se in a spatial sense. It's actually given a target set of resources or a target set of point of interest, how many of those in relation to the total available points of interest can I reach in the most efficient measure? And that's measured by time in our case. Um, and so how does that relate to uh, Urban Footprint? Urban Footprint is a scenario modeling platform for urban planners or other individuals in this realm. Um, and what you can do is you can draw different types of land use or um, transit futures, and you can compare the performance of the two. And you do that with our uh, national parcel canvas layer, which includes a bunch of metadata um, at a very fine grain. Uh, so there's parcel level accurate residential employment mix, building typology, built form, and land use types. Um, and then you're able to compare the different types of scenarios that you paint um, for these different futures through uh, either summary statistics or, in our case, um, we also offer a suite of uh, modules to perform, for example, greenhouse gas emissions, household costs, fiscal, vehicle induced vehicle miles traveled, um, trip generation, public health, et cetera. And all of these modules utilize our accessibility module at its core. Um, your ability to access resources defines the agent's behavior on the network, and that's critical for changing, for example, mode choice or travel patterns um, in an area. So what you see here on the left is uh, the East Bay in California, and we have Berkeley, Oakland, down to Alameda, and we've done a parcel level accessibility analysis of employment. Um, and that type of information um, allows our modules to indicate whether the type of tra travel pattern is like transit or vehicle. Um, and it also induces different types of like um, greenhouse gas emissions or fiscal um, consequences. So um, there are two primary, at a high level, elements of transit accessibility. There is the walk network. And then there's the transit network. Um, and the walk network comes from OpenStreetMap. And then the transit network we utilize is based off of GTFS, General Transit Feed Specification. Um, and it's basically a format for holding schedule information um, by a transit operator over a given um, set area. And it's a non-spatial or an aspatial data set. Um, and what we need to do is take these two and convert them into a network graph. Um, and if you're here, you probably know what a network graph is, but just in case, it's a set of nodes and edges, and the nodes are points of interest, and the edges, or in OSM, the ways are the components that connect any two set of node pairs. So for example, if we were to walk outside out front, you might imagine that two intersections are connected by an edge, which is the sidewalk, and we have metadata about that. For example, the incline, the type of sidewalk that's there, and the distance. And we'd use that information to compute a cost to connect from one edge, from one node to another. Um, and you see graphs, these are graphs, and you see them every day. For example, here's a transit network. This is the London Tube, and it's also a graph. And in OSM's example, here's a city in Italy, and also Cambridge in uh, Boston. And both of those are graphs. Everything is a graph. Um, so it's awesome. Uh, so we have, first let's, let's gather the walk network data as a first step for computing this accessibility. Um, and there's two quick ways if you would like to do it in like a Jupyter notebook, for example, that, are, that make it really easy to do this. Um, and both, the first one utilizes uh, OSM's overpass API, which has, allows for very complicated queries to be set against um, a fairly fresh updated uh, snapshot of the OSM planet. Um, but there's a utility called OSMNX, which is a Python library, um, and it actually obfuscates all of that. And you can literally type in, for example, Manhattan, Columbus, Ohio, and you can just ask for the type of network, drive, walk, and it'll actually generate and produce that as an instantiate a graph for you. Um, and that, as you can see, it's like one line. 
Another option that's being discussed at this event that's really fast and handy is the shared streets um, protocol. And the shared streets protocol has a Python library that interfaces with the shared streets API, which again is quite simple. You pip install shared streets, and then you simply request the tile that you are interested in. So in this example, you can actually see this is a shared streets output. So you can see the tiles as you can see the grid kind of along the edge of the um, network that's rendered there. And this is the walk network for the East Bay and parts of San Francisco and the peninsula. Um, and then you need the transit network. So in this example, again, I have the transit network overlaid there. Um, and the transit network is uh, produced from that GTFS data that I was discussing earlier. Um, and there are two primary aggregators of GTFS data. There's transit land and transit feeds. Um, and both of them have helpful blogs about how to pull down their data, but it's basically a zip file of text documents. And once you pull that down, uh, there's a handy tool, caveat, I wrote it, but it's uh, called Pear Tree. And again, I'm trying to show that these are just very quick one-liners. With Pear Tree, you can simply request a representative feed from the total operator schedule. And that feed will produce to you, so for example, in representative feed, it'll produce to you the typical schedule. It'll analyze all the schedules of, for all days produced by that operator and give you a typical schedule back. And then from that, you simply need to indicate the parameters for the time that you're interested in. So in this example, I say load feed is graph, and I have a start and end time, which is the peak hour for the Bay Area, so 7 to 10 AM. And I say, from the hours of 7 to 10 AM, please produce a graph for me that is representative of the bus performance during that time period for every single route and every single stop pair in that schedule. Um, once you do that, just like with OSNMX, it's easy to just plot and visualize and sanity check your outputs. So here's a quick example. I quickly unzipped uh, the MTA's Brooklyn GTFS feed, and I rendered it here. And as you can see, it, spatially, it makes it spatially correlate with uh, the locations of the stops, and you can then actually observe any of those edges and see what the runtime performance is for any edge between two stop sets. Um, now we just need to get that and the walk network stacked together. Um, and fortunately, with, we can also, at this point, now that we have these two components, we're actually not just limited to those two components. We can actually synthetically add any additional routes that we're interested in. Let's say we want to add a new bike lane to a part of the city. Let's say we want to add a new BRT lane or a new bus route or a new train line or even a new bridge. It's quite simple to do that by simply using a uh, custom formatted uh, GeoJSON um, that has a few key parameters, and you can simply stack that on top of the network as well. And that's what's really nice um, here in Pear Tree is that once you pull in one feed, you can actually continue to instantiate additional feeds and simply provide in the existing graph. It'll connect all the existing components together and continue to stack your graph um, as many times as you want um, with any types of mode combination um, that you're interested in. Um, so once you have that um, instantiated graph, um, again, I'm trying to emphasize these one-liners here. Here you can just do an ego graph, which is essentially the computation of an isochrone um, on that network graph with network X. And it's actually pretty fast, pretty simple. Again, you could do this all in a few lines in a Jupyter notebook. And here, if it might not be visible, but in green, in the center is your walk network, and in pink outside is the uh, transit network. So you can see the difference in your walk shed within 20 minutes and your transit shed. And again, with 40 minutes, and you can see most of the East Bay. Um, so isochrones are pretty popular in the past few years. Uh, Mapbox has set up an API. Mapzen, rest in peace, uh, had a mobility um, tool that produced uh, isochrones as well. And then Conveil Analysis has a really detailed um, isochrone um, analytics platform. Um, called Analyst. Um, anyway, so those are awesome, and they're also really fast to compute. Um, the challenge at Urban Footprint is that we don't want just one isochrone. If somebody's doing a large project, you might want hundreds of thousands of isochrones computed at once, and you want the results for all of them. Because what you want is not the, not the performance of a single parcel in a region. You want the performance of all parcels relative to all other parcels in the region. Um, so here what you have is a chloropleth of all parcels in Oakland and their proximity to the nearest school. And what you want is not, the, not how far away a, school, a given parcel is from a given school. You want to know how far away relative to all other parcels a given parcel is from a given school. 
Um, and then, for example, for something like parks or complex geometries, not points of interest, we need to disaggregate those using, for example, here, uh, Delaunay triangulation, but basically we need to break up large points of interest or large geometries into a subset of shapes and then apply those, that, that subset of park acreage to the nearest node. So, for example, if you want to calculate how much park acreage you can reach relative to all other parcels, you need to have a disaggregated shape here. Um, so, again, computing this just in NetworkX and just in Python, just in your notebook, is actually quite simple. So, if you were to run the ego graph over all nodes in the network, and again, this is that walk AC stacked, you can actually see what we have here is just the number of nodes. So, every node has a value of one. And you're saying, how much of the rest of the network can I reach? And you can see the fade off of the network here um, in both of those images. Um, but one of the disadvantages here is that it once you're reaching the hundreds of thousands of iterations, there are performance hits. Um, this could take hours to run, unfortunately. Um, so there are a few things that you could do to help speed this up. You could simplify the graph, for example. Um, you can re remove all intermediate nodes and just take the intersection nodes, and you could just drop all the complexity there and say, this is roughly close enough. Um, you know, I'm happy with a block level analysis, and that's what we've done here in this example. And again, when you're looking at a region level, Analysis, that's actually acceptable. This is, again, the same thing run, much faster. And as you can see, you still capture a lot of detail. This is the, as you can see, these white lines are the impacts of freeways and large roads on the accessibility of different regions. Um, and then another thing you can do is if you know that you're working at a larger uh, scale, you can use a coalesce operation. And again, these are just one-liners, so this is just PT coalesce. You run coalesce and you set a meter resolution. So in this case, I set 400, which is roughly a quarter mile resolution. And you can take the fairly complicated network of, say, AC Transit or a walk network, and you can reduce it to a handful of nodes, you know, an, on the order of hundreds, if not from tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands. And this makes all these computations fairly trivial at this point. Um, those are all awesome, and they do help with analysis for small sites. But what if you want to get bigger. And that's, what ha that's what's happened at Urban Footprint. We have customers doing the, entire of, the entirety of, for example, central Ohio, central Ohio. So this is a customer doing the seven county region around Columbus. And they wanted to compute accessibility to every parcel or every single geometry within this project area. Um, so at this scale, you're still hitting performance um, walls. Um, so there needs to be further improvements. So if, if you've reached this point and you still want to keep going, um, there are options. There are three options. Um, there are three options for Python specifically. There is Graph Tool, Pandana, and iGraph. And uh, all of them are essentially Python wrappers over C libraries that assist in utilizing common uh, graph algorithms. Um, the iGraph and Graph Tool are more general use, and Pandan is actually specifically for doing all-to-all -all, um, calculations. Graph Tool I prefer the most because it is stable and it utilizes, it's essentially a wrapper over Boost, which is a set of C++ libraries that are like well-vetted and performant. Um, so once you have, again, <laughs> just trying to emphasize that these are all one-liners, you can simply say, from pear tree, import network X to graph tool. And in one line, you can convert and instantiate the network X graph at full resolution in graph tool. And once you do this, you have the entire network held in C instead of in Python objects. Um, and computing um, any sort of um, calculation becomes much faster, like from seconds for each operation to milliseconds. Um, so again, here I'm just showing that we're looking at the same graph again. This is the AC transit system. Uh, I didn't do the walk network because I was just doing this quickly earlier. But um, one thing that you can do that was fairly complicated in Network X before is this is betweenness centrality. So betweenness centrality is the calculation of the shortest path from all nodes to all nodes. This type of operation in Network X can actually take, on a, on a medium-sized graph, can take dozens of hours. Um, and once you're doing this in graph tool, it's on the order of uh, seconds at most. Um, and what this is, and then what you've computed here is you've contorted the graph and you've actually identified the core segments of the transit network. And this actually allows you to observe what components or what segments of your transit network are the most important and the most critical. So what are actually your points of failure? Um, if these components of the network become distorted or not performing in any way, your entire network falls apart. Um, so 
again, graph tool is quite simple, and actually I'm gonna show breadth for search. A good Dijkstra would actually be the best graph, uh, best um, algorithm to use for the type of analysis we're doing, but this one just shows you how simple graph tool is. We simply, if we want to perform the same sort of all-to-all -all analysis, we simply instantiate this visitor object, which defines what graph tool, a set of instructions for graph tool to execute as it moves through, as it performs an algorithm, like such as breadth first search, and moves through the uh, network. And simply, so in this example, I'm just saying, uh, please just calculate your current distance, the current amount that you've traversed, and also return to me um, the, the, so the value. So you could imagine if every node had the number of households or the number of employment, it would also say, by the way, you've reached this distance and you've now reached this many households, this much employment of this type, and you've accessed X number of park acres. acres. Um, and then it's just a matter of running that in parallel on all points, and you're able to compute all to all accessibility in under a second, or very trivial amounts of time. Um, and again, this is the output in both ways uh, for the AC transit system. And then here's seeing, okay, and then here's seeing um, how you could actually use that in urban footprint to kind of bring it all back to urban footprint. So here, this is it from a blog post, and what we're doing is saying, in St. Louis and Detroit as well, uh, there's a large amount of vacant housing stock and it's very hard to decide which ones to deal with first. So what we did is compute transit accessibility and say which households, which, t which units, if you renovate them, have the ability to increase access to, transit, ex to employment um, and certain types of employment the most. And that's basically what we're doing through a quick selection from the accessibility output. Anyway, hope that made sense. <laughs> And that's all, thanks. Okay, yeah. Yes, although right now we don't do, tra once we get a hold of good traffic data, you could, you could do this for auto as well. Um, that's just mostly a data question. I think Conveil is awesome at stress testing your transit network. This might be more from the perspective of a planner or a land use planner or a developer or somebody that's working, that's not focused on transit optimization. What I think is awesome that Conveil does is they can actually stress test your GTFS and say, look, you claim you have this level of coverage, but if a person leaves a minute later from their home, they actually can only access a significant subset of that target area, which means that you have a very fragile transit network. Um, and you can't really do that here. So that's, a, I think, a different perspective. Okay. Now, I was looking for what are the advantages of the that you're using? Um, we're, I think we're doing something fairly similar. Um, we're just doing it at a parcel level because we want the performance of a given parcel, whereas Conveil is just gridding up the entire world into, I think, a 200-meter grid. I can't remember off the top of my head. But they just grid up the world. And then you get something that looks like a raft. Awesome, I'll also post this somewhere online afterwards, but it's basically OSMNX, um, shared streets, uh, pear tree, and then network X. Um, for, and then if you want the performance, graph tool. Um, so, does anybody follow Elon Levy at all? <laughs> One person, okay. Um, I have, I can show you an example. So, he's this, I think, is he a crazy French guy? I, I'm not sure exactly. Um, but he, he basically proposed a complete redevelopment of the MTA Brooklyn system, and he was observing a lot of the, the fact that the, there was like huge performance hits um, on certain components of the network. And you can actually see that if you run it between a centrality analysis on uh, the MTA system in Brooklyn. What you see there is the current system, and you can actually see Flatbush. You can see the big red swath. That means all of the buses are getting routed along, along one, one core route. 
So if anything happens on Flatbush, which happens about every 20 seconds, um, your buses start bunching. And when your buses bunch, they bunch all throughout the day. And starting from the early morning, your entire system is screwed for the rest of the day. Um, and MTA has serious performance issues related to this. Um, what Elon Levy did was he tried to distribute the performant bus lines and increase lower the number of routes and increase the frequency of buses along those routes to reduce this sort of reduce risk of this sort of like single point of failure. Um, and then I ran it between us and centrality on his proposal as well. And you can see a much more balanced network with higher levels of accessibility throughout the network. So what happens here is, let's say something happened on Flatbush. You're actually OK. You can actually get all around Brooklyn still. Um, uh, all the other buses are still running frequently and have high levels of accessibility.